Hello and welcome to this getting started video for W4. W4 is our new forensic and triage tool which we released in July 2019. In this video we'll look at what W4 is and the features which W4 has to offer. We'll also go through the installation process, creating a case and adding some evidence to that case. The specific use of W4, including examples of workflows, analysis, etc., will be available in other videos. This is a list of topics and the times in which they start for this video. If the topic which you are interested in is later in the video, you can skip forward to that time to view that particular topic. W4 is a tool for fast review and investigation of computer forensic images and evidence. The goal of W4 is to allow investigators to rapidly review a set of evidence, locate the items of interest and report their findings. W4 can extract a wide variety of information from the evidence, including user activity, registry artifacts and artifacts from web browsers, documents, emails, and much more. W4 has a number of useful features. Some of these features are unique to W4 and are not in any other forensic tools. We'll have a look at these features and other general features which were in W4. Firstly, when in the search tab, we can see on the left hand side that the artifacts identified by W4 are categorized into groups by artifact type. This makes it easy for the user to show or to search on items related to a specific artifact type. In this example, when we click on the users category, we can see all of the user accounts which are on the system in the table. The table shows all relevant information about these accounts. This includes the security ID, last login date, the last failed login date, and much more. This same table can be applied to any of the categories on the left to get a quick view of the items in a specific category or group of categories. For example, when you click on the USB devices category, all USB devices which have been used on the system are displayed. You can quickly see which user account is associated with each device. In addition, other artifacts such as the hardware serial number, the volume name, the volume serial number, and a variety of dates and information can be seen for each device. Directly below the table is the timeline. The timeline shows a chronological list in date order of documents, artifacts, and events for all items in the case. The user can easily filter the items shown in the table by a date range. This is done by simply dragging over the desired section of the timeline and highlighting the date range which is required. The items which are within that date range are shown in the table. The user can set a more precise date filter by entering specific start and end dates in the fields provided. The shaded area of the timeline shows all of the items in the case and specifically the number of items over the date range. In this example, you can see more shaded area after 2016. This indicates that a lot of activity occurred after 2016. If the user selects a number of categories from the left panel, only those categories are shown in the table above. In this example, a solid line, which is overlaid on top of the shaded area of the timeline, shows that particular selection of items. This visual makes it easier for the user to see when these items or events occurred and how many events occurred in relation to everything in the case. Up until now, we have been viewing items in the Items tab. The Items tab shows artifacts as separate items. W4 has a very nice feature where different but related artifacts can be grouped into an event list. In this example of USB device activity, the items tab shows a simple list of artifacts for shortcut files and event log entries. When we click on the events view, 
the list shows us much more detail about the events that have occurred with these items. In this view we can see a number of useful artifacts such as Starting at 12.31pm we see that the Store and Go USB device was connected to the system and this device was mapped as the F drive on the system. At 2.31 we can see that the My Documents folder on the F drive was accessed. At 2.32 the USB device was removed then reconnected to the system. Around that time we can see that the user accessed a file named secretmeeting.rtf which is located in the My Documents folder. Finally, at 2.34 we can see the Store and Go device being disconnected. Later on in that day we can also see more activity with this device where it is connected to the system and other files are accessed. Join the review of these items in the Event tab. Items can be tagged so that they can be quickly accessed at a later time. The tagging interface is similar to what we have in Inteller where tags can be created individually or under a parent tag. In W4, tags can also be color coded to assist with the review. In addition to tagging, you can also add notes to items in the events view. This enhances the display for the items in the events view. For example, the user can add notes to important artifacts to highlight what has happened on the system. When creating a case report, these notes can be included in the report to help the reader understand complex reporting. Another very nice feature in W4 is the ability to visualize the items and artifacts that are associated to a particular document or artifact. In this example, I've gone down further in the events list and selected a shortcut or link file for the china.pdf document. Now with one click of the links button, I can see all of the artifacts that are associated with this document. In a real case, this graphic would provide a great deal of information for the investigation team. This information includes what file the shortcut relates to. In this example, we can see three copies of the PDF on the system. Where the various copies of the PDF reside on the system. Who the user was when the item was accessed. When the file was accessed and we can also see evidence of the file being emailed to someone else. Because this information would be useful for a report, we have provided the ability to capture this graphic for use when building a case report. A description can be entered when saving this graphic. For reporting purposes, you could enter text in this field which explains the links graphic and what it means. This description text is then shown in the report. This graphic can also be exported in PNG or PDF formats for external use. W4 has a comprehensive reporting wizard which provides huge flexibility for the user when reporting on artifacts identified in a case. The reporting features include the following. Custom logos can be added to the report. Custom fields where information about the case can be added to the front page of the report. Sections where the investigator can add items and artifacts from the case. Each section can be independently configured using the sections details fields. This means that a user can generate a report section which matches the type of items being reported. For example, tabular data may need to be reported in table format and in landscape orientation. Other artifacts in the report may need to be reported in a list format and in portrait orientation. Also, images can be displayed in a configurable image gallery with the associated metadata. The original natives and extracted text can be included in the report by using these options. The investigator can add the metadata columns which are required for each section independently. This is useful as different metadata fields can be reported for different types of items and artifacts. There are a few header and footer settings that can be set and a summary of the item types and sources can be added to the report. The report can be exported in either PDF or Word docx formats. In the sample report we can see the front page with all of its custom fields. 
The summary page shows us the sources and the types which are included in the report. Then we move into the sections. The calendar items section shows us a list of the calendar items that were created by the user. The web activity section shows the websites visited by the user. Note that this is tabular data so it is in table format and set to landscape. The document access section shows the documents which were accessed by the user. Again, this is in table format. The images section shows large thumbnails of the images along with the associated metadata for each image. The last section of this report shows the user activity in relation to a USB device and files accessed on that device. In addition to the USB and file activity above, the last page of the report shows a links graph. This image shows all of the links and artifacts which are associated with the China shortcut file. Note that you can add custom text to each report section, which is shown at the top of the reported items. This is useful as it allows the user to provide more detail about the items which are being reported. Before installing W4, please review the minimum hardware and software specifications that we have suggested to run W4. These specifications are the same for running our IntelliProfessional product, which can be found on our support site at the link below. The installation process for W4 is quite simple. First download the latest W4 installer from our support site. Double click the installer and step through the installation wizard. Choose a location where you'd like to install W4. If the next button is disabled on the screen, it may be that you do not have enough space on the drive to install W4. You can check how much space is required and how much space is available on your system here. Edit the start menu item if required. The installation process will then continue. Once installed, this window will be shown. Click on finish to close this window. Note that W4 is licensed similar to Intella where a licensed dongle is used. Therefore, you'll need to plug your W4 dongle into the system before running W4. Once W4 has been installed on your processing system, you are ready to create cases and index data. To get started, double click the W4 icon on the desktop to start the application. If you have more than one dongle plugged into the system, or if you have more than one type of license for your dongle, the license manager will be shown on the screen. The license manager allows the user to select the license that they wish to use. Select the W4 license. When W4 is launched, the case manager window will be displayed first. The case manager allows the user to create a new case, select an existing case to be opened, or to process a W4 case in Intella. Clicking on the new button will launch the new case wizard. Type a name for the case in this field. You can add a description if desired. Finally, path to the folder where you want the case to be created. Similar to Intella, we recommend that you use separate local drives on the processing system for the case and the evidence. Once the details for the case have been entered, click OK and the new W4 case will be opened in the Sources tab. This screen allows you to add evidence to the case, such as folders containing files or disk images. Note that before you add evidence to the case, you can add keyword lists. If a keyword list is used, the terms in the keyword list will be searched during the indexing phase. There are a number of options for each keyword list which you can add to the case. The first is to include full text. With this option, W4 will search in both extracted text and metadata, otherwise only metadata is taken into account. The case sensitive setting is self-explanatory, where W4 will make the search strings case sensitive. Note that by default, the case for the search strings is insensitive. For regex, W4 interprets the search as regular expressions. Note that the searches will take more time if this option is selected. The Highlight Hits option will enable hit highlighting in the search tab for the keywords which are found. 
Once the keyword list has been added and configured, the evidence can be added to the case. You can drag and drop the evidence directly on the target area shown in the left side panel. Or you can click on one of the options in the centre of the screen and navigate to the evidence source. Under the general section of the screen, you can add information about the source that you are ingesting into the case. This includes the name of the evidence, a description, who the examiner is, and the evidence number. By default, W4 will only index user-created data which is stored in common locations such as the registry and the user folders. You can index everything within the source if you remove the check from this checkbox. On the right, you can set which time zone the evidence originated from. Under the artifacts section, you can select which artifacts you wish to process. Finally, the advanced section allows you to set additional options for the indexing process. Click on the save button to save the changes, then click on the index all sources button to start the actual indexing process. When the indexing process starts, W4 will switch to the Summary tab. The Summary tab allows the user to see the progress of the indexing task. This screen also shows a live update of the artifacts which are being identified during the indexing process. When the indexing is complete, the case data shown at the top right corner will show Complete. In the Sources tab, you will see that you now have a source in your case. From this point, your case is ready for you to run searches and conduct analysis of the data and artifacts. We will look at some of those workflows in another video. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. This video along with other training videos can be viewed at the link shown below.